Africa's highest capacity subsea internet cable, Equiano, has landed at OpenServe's cable station facility in Malkbostrand in Cape Town. The undersea cable has 20 times the capacity of the last cable built to serve the region. It's expected to have a significant economic impact and help to drive digital transformation across the continent. To find out more, I'm joined now by Jan Vermeulen, by uh, my broadband editor at large. A very good afternoon to you. Thank you so much uh, for, for joining us. It's uh, seen as, as a massive deal when it comes to uh, advancing the telecommunications industry. Talk to us about what this means. Sure thing. Yeah, the the cable, while it is a massive cable, and I don't want to take anything away from that, um, the, the hype around it that's been built up by Google has been a little overblown, um, uh, if if I can temper expectations just a little bit. So first, let's talk about um, what what makes the cable extraordinary, and and perhaps then we can look at why it's. Um, you know, uh, the, the, um, all the hype around how it's going to, uh, you know, drive down prices and, uh, you know, save all our lives and stuff is, is a little bit overblown. But, but firstly, right now in South Africa, we have around 57 terabits per second of capacity coming into the country. 57, that's the important number. This cable alone is 144. Now, those 57... Uh, terabits that I was talking about earlier come, comes across a, a host of cables. Telcom's Safety Safe cable, it's the WAX cable, Easy Seacom. Uh, everybody's heard of the Seacom cable. Uh -huh. um, uh, th there's really just a tremendous amount of cables already coming into South Africa with a huge amount of capacity, and this one is even bigger. Um, but now the the thing is that uh, of the capacity landing in South Africa a very small proportion is actually used. CECOM, for example, is, I think, around 12 terabits per second. We're using maybe 500 gigabits per second of that. that as a percentage, that's 5%. So let's say 5 to 10% of all the undersea capacity currently coming into South Africa where we're using. 90% we're not even using yet. Um, so uh, w why then build a cable? And, uh, and the, the answer is that companies like Google and those companies buying up the capacity on this cable um, are foreseeing an exponential increase for demand for data on the continent. But not data necessarily from you or I, but from content owners, Facebook, Netflix, um, and, uh, and, and Google through YouTube. Um, are big drivers of content uh, or big drivers of data through video. And what's happening is that a lot of that content is being brought closer to the end consumer, to us here in Africa. Rather than fetching it overseas the whole time, it's being brought closer to where the end user is watching it. That makes it cheaper for the ISP at the end of the day, um, and that drives down prices. But here in South Africa, we've already gone through a wave of that. Um, with the huge amount of capacity that's already landing in the country. And so the impact of the Google cable on that, on Equiano, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't foresee to be as massive as the other cables have already been, the WACs, the CECOMs, um, and so on. So, um, but for our neighbors, this is a huge deal uh, because together with the Equiano cable, there's a huge amount of capacity being built into landlocked African countries. And, uh, and so for us down here at South Africa, we've been very lucky with all these cables converging on us, but our neighbors have not been so lucky. And so this cable and the associated projects that go with it um, is going to be a tremendous boon for the rest of the continent. And there's a, a huge amount of hope that it's, that it's going to drive um, further interconnectivity between African countries. What about the potential of it unlocking digital growth opportunities for South African SMEs? So um, the, the, what, what this is is an investment in that future. So right now, if SMEs want international or need international capacity, it's there. Um, what, what the Google Cable might do is further drive down the costs of bandwidth at data centers, um, which could make you know, the prices of um, cloud providers like AWS and Azure um, more affordable in Africa. 
uh, we'll see, I guess. Um, it, it's not that much more expensive than getting uh, servers in the Europe or the, or the Americas, um, but it's a little bit more expensive. And so hopefully um, this kind of investment drives down those prices. But um, what, this, what this is a bet on, what this is a signal of, is a, is a huge company like Google saying there is about to be an, an explosion of this kind of activity on the continent, and we are placing a big bet, uh, a, a bet that's two and a half times the size of all the capacity coming into South Africa at the moment, um, that there's about to be an explosion uh, in large enterprises, small businesses uh, across, the, across the spectrum. Yes, because uh, Google South Africa has said that uh, with this move, they are now anticipating uh, an indirect contribution to job creation. I mean, they're speaking large numbers, eight, 180,000 jobs and an increase of, of GDP. Yeah, so uh, I, I hesitate to allow Google to toot their own horn there. Um, while um, the investment in this cable is a huge vote of confidence, and obviously they're not doing it for charity. Uh, it costs money, and so we've seen companies like Liquid uh, International, uh, sorry, Liquid Intelligent Technologies (LIT). Um, they've recently changed their name, which is why I was struggling there. Wyok um, and Telcom mm -hmm. already buying uh, fiber pairs on this cable, and so uh, Google is is um, hoping to firstly help drive data to the continent, but um, it's also hoping to reap a return on investment there. So um, while, yes, there is an indirect knock-on on jobs, and certainly the fact is without bandwidth, um, without access, with, without broadband penetration, um, there, there, will be, uh, there, there will not be that, that increase in jobs. Um, but uh, the, a lot of the work falls down to the people who are bringing that Internet connectivity from the ocean to the, 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 the end user in the, in the middle of the, uh, of the continent or here in, in South Africa, whether it's the MTNs and Telcoms and Vodacoms and Celsius building towers or whether it's our fiber network operators laying fiber past every home, um, that's how you unlock that investment. There's still, there's still another – there are many players that have to make this investment work. Mm. Google is a significant one, but it's certainly not the only one. So we're not going to be seeing immediate results. It's all more speaking to long-term um, output. Definitely. And, uh, and it might, as I said, have, uh, you know, in the medium term, some impact on pricing at data centers, which could have a knock-on effect on, on end consumers. But international bandwidth, is such a small portion of what we pay for our data in South Africa at the moment that it's not going to cause for us a, a huge benefit in terms of pricing. What it is, it's an extra route out of the country. So if we lose some of our undersea cables, if they, if they and what I say about lose is if they break. Um, we saw that happening at the beginning of the pandemic. Two cables broke on the West Coast, WAX mm -hmm. and the SAT3 cable. Um, and that took, that took over a month to fix. This gives an, a redundant route so that uh, we're, we're not struggling while we're trying to fix those cables. Um, and uh, it brings extra competition, which is always a good thing. Yeah, very well. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Thanks for giving us some uh, techni, uh, techno savvy there. Uh, Jan van Muehlen.